In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, coming together as one big family to celebrate this 20th Sunday in ordinary time, let us now prepare ourselves, acknowledge our sins, and for the times we have chosen to turn ourselves away from God, from His love, from his mercy, we ask for his pardon and forgiveness. I confess and to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, we have prepared for those who love you good things 
which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, have a care for justice, act with integrity, for soon my salvation will come and my integrity be manifest. Foreigners who have attached themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love his name and be his servants, all who observe the Sabbath, not profaning it, and cling to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain. I will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their holocaust and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, let all the nations praise you. Oh God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth. Among all nations, your salvation. Oh God, let all the nations praise. May the nations be glad and exult Because you rule the peoples in equity The nations on the earth you guide Oh God, let all the nations praise you May the peoples praise you God, may all the peoples praise you, may God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear Him. Oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let me tell you pagans this. I have been sent to the pagans as their apostle, and I am proud of being sent. But the purpose of it is to make my own people envious of you, and in this way save some of them since their rejection meant the reconciliation of the world, do you know what their admission will mean? Nothing less than a resurrection from the dead. God never takes back his gifts or revokes his choice. Just as you change from being disobedient to God and now enjoy mercy because of their disobedience, so those who are disobedient now, and only because of the mercy shown to you, will also enjoy mercy eventually. God 
has imprisoned all men in their own disobedience only to show mercy to all mankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus left Genesaret and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Then out came a Canaanite woman from that district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, take pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him, Give her what she wants, they said, because she is shouting after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. She retorted, Ah, yes, sir. But even the house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord give you peace. As we gather here in this sacred space, this sacred time on this 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we are reminded of the profound message woven that can be found in today's readings. And that is the boundless love, the unending love and mercy of God that embraces all of humanity, regardless of background or circumstance. Our hearts are called to open wider to this divine invitation. Just as the scriptures inviting us to reflect upon the nature of this inclusive love. Let's take a look at our first reading today. Our first reading, taken from the book of Isaiah, third book, chapter 56, addressing the people of God who had returned from Babylonian exile. The Lord declares, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. In other words, my dear friends, God's call was not just for His people, that is the Israelites, but it was also for foreigners, those who were clinging to God's covenant. God would make them joyful in His house of prayer. The temple of Jerusalem will be rebuilt. 
for everyone, rebuilt after the return from exile. God's covenant was not just with the people of Israel, but also with the foreigners, the Gentiles. God's house of prayer was meant not just for people he had originally chosen in the Sinai covenant, but also but also for the Gentiles whom he now included in the covenant. This message, my dear friends, resonates powerfully with the story, with the narrative that we can find in our gospel today, where we encounter a woman who exemplifies unyielding faith and persistence. Her story teaches us that God's love knows no boundaries. So imagine a busy marketplace, much like the bustling streets we encounter every day. Right? So in this marketplace, a Canaanite woman approached Jesus with a plea for her daughter's healing. Despite initial resistance, she persisted, even when faced with Jesus' response that his mission was primarily to the Israelites. Her response reveals her profound faith. And she says, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. This tenacious woman recognized that God's love is abundant. That God's love overflows to include everyone, to include you and me. Like a banquet table laden with bountiful blessings, Jesus marveled at her faith, and in that moment, her daughter was healed. This episode, my dear friends, reminds us that faith, faith breaks down barriers and allows us to witness the marvels of God's grace in unexpected places. Likewise, in our second reading today, St. Paul's letter to the Romans emphasizes the Gentiles' inclusion in God's plan of salvation. Just as a Canaanite woman was brought into the fold through her faith, St. Paul's mission to the Gentiles was very much driven by a desire to spread the gospel of salvation. St. Paul wanted to spread the gospel to all corners of the earth, to the entire nation. And he was working very hard to bring this gospel, this good news, to the Gentiles. This reflects very much the heart of God's plan. That is to draw all people, to draw all nations into the embrace of his love, regardless of their origins. If you were to translate this into today's language, I suppose, um, think about the diversity within our own family gathering, right? We all have relatives who come from different walks of life, each with their own unique stories, experiences, backgrounds, cultures. Yet, Despite our differences, the bond of love unites us. And just as we set aside our differences, our uh, dissimilarities, to celebrate together, God calls us to embrace each other. Celebrating the mosaic, the mosaic of humanity that reflects 
his own creative diversity. To illuminate this message, my dear friends, I would like to draw upon the lyrics of Coldplay's song called Fix You. The chorus speaks to God's desire to heal and restore. And I quote, Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones. And I will try to fix you. Our Heavenly Father's love guides us, ignites us, ignites our spirits and heals our brokenness. As we open our hearts to His inclusive love, as we embrace this goodness that is God's love, we in turn become vessels of that love helping to mend the brokenness that we encounter in our world today. So as we continue our journey through life, let us remember, remember the unwavering faith of the Canaanite woman, the mission of St. Paul, and the divine promise declared by prophet Isaiah. Let us be the bearers of God's all-encompassing love, reaching out to those around us with that same open-heartedness we experience within our own diverse families. And more importantly, the same love extended to all of us by God. May the song of God's inclusive love resonate in our hearts leading us to a deeper relationship with Him and with one another. And just as the Canaanite woman, the woman's daughter, was healed, may our world also be healed through the power of God's love. May God bless us abundantly and may His inclusive love, His embracing love, be a guiding light in our lives. Now let us all rise, and together with one voice, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With faith in Christ's constant presence in our lives, let us now offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the global community of believers in faith, that we continue to grow in understanding and ecumenical dialogue and work together to promote peace and harmony in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those who serve in government, in our military and civil service, that they continue to protect the rights of the most vulnerable in society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Archdiocesan Pastoral Council, that the Council may discern the pastoral priorities of our Church for the next 10 years particularly the formation of disciples after the heart of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who have responded to God's invitation to service as we celebrate Lay Apostolate Sunday, that they continue to serve the Lord and the community joyfully. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. for the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, and those who live without life's basic necessities, that our loving God be near to them in their challenges and bless them with hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Eternal God, you are ever bountiful in your mercy to the contrite of heart. Give us the courage to be witnesses to your mercy in our world and hear our petitions that we place before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that, by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your only, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis, St. Claire, St. Anthony, blessed Allegra, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of these family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace and love. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, word, and my soul, my soul shall be healed. Be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that, conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to say thank you, everyone, uh, dear friends, for your contribution to the parish feast day, and I think also for your support and prayers for World Youth Day event. So it was a great success. It was a wonderful event. In fact, it was very meaningful for all of us that took part uh, in the event. Uh, more details can be found out in the Catholic News, uh, which can be found, I think, this weekend's release. Uh, so you get to see all the different sharings, inputs, thoughts uh, by different contingent from Singapore. Uh, so, and I ask you to continue to please pray for all the youth, especially now parish they may continue to grow, and that the sanctuary of our hearts will continue to find its space in God. That's all for me, my dear friends. Take care and have a wonderful and meaningful weekend. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. After each invocation, I ask you to respond, Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.